Hi there. I'm Tyler. Welcome to Billion Dollar Clown Farm. I've been doing a lot of like videos on how to play orcs at a higher higher level and uh i realize i've never really done like a beginner's guide i feel like uh this the cycle of the game is very confusing playing warhammer at all is confusing but there's also like larger meta things happening like uh how long do codexes last like if i build something for this codex can i expect to have it be useful later how do i uh try to ensure that i can do that i want to cover stuff for like people who are newish to warhammer in general but also people who are familiar with 40k and want to start playing orcs so yeah I'm going to try and break down both of those step-by-step uh, step in different ways, depending on who you are and what your intentions for playing Warhammer are. Uh, how to orc. What is how do? Definitely just like trying to identify first, like what your goals are is important because like this game can be so many different things for different people. Playing Warhammer is like kind of crazy. I feel like it's much different than like playing like a role playing game or like magic when most people are kind of like more or less doing the same thing. I feel like it's going to range from like a really grindy competitive game, uh, but has a totally different atmosphere than like friends hang out and playing. The am amount of narrative involved can like greatly shift too. I feel like it's less about like the core mechanics of the game and more like people's intentions in playing. Here, here's some archetypes of players that I think are going to be around uh, in the new Orc Codex. Uh, play Bully Boys until Mega Knobs are nerfed into Oblivion. Cycle back to Iron Storm. Iron Storm is a space marine detachment if you're unfamiliar. It's just like, if you're here for this current meta cycle, I think Bully Boys are for you. They're A, composed of units that are likely to uh, be good for a while or come back in a way later down the line that are still good. These are all units in Bully Boys that were insane in 9th edition too. And now you get to play them and have them be good in a new way in 10th. They were already good in like the Wog Tribe Detachment too. You want even more of them now than you did then. The units in Bully Boys are, A, I think it's probably the best attachment. I, I, th I think it's just like the best one out of the six and I, I could be wrong about that, but Gut Instinct definitely tells me it'll be like the de facto competitive one. And then uh, B, yeah, I think these models are like likely to stick around. So if you want to like have them play them while they're great and then put them back on the shelf and then rotate back to your like main army for a while, I think like Bully Boys are the way to go. And I'll like give some examples of what units are probably best for you to buy. Play one game every six months in a friend's garage. That's a lot of people, uh, anyone with like kids or like uh, a lot of things that impact their life uh, time wise. Like, I mean, just anyone who's like older, I think too. Six months could be hyperbolic. The idea of this person is someone who just like likes to play as often as they can, have like a basic understanding of the rules and like keep up with releases to some capacity and live like vicariously, uh, largely through like Warhammer social media and probably painting, uh, but doesn't actually get to play that much, which is like pretty reasonable. I think that's like where we all should be. I'm just like a psychopath that has decided to make this game most of my life. Uh, me and the other people like me, we live in a small bubble, right? And it's like easy to forget that like most people don't do that. I want to go over stuff that's good for that kind of player. Build an army really quickly and have a great time right now, then potentially be very sad when 11th comes out. Uh, these are detachments like Cult of Speed, Dread Mob. The Beast Naga one, not as much, but yeah, predominantly Cult of Speed and Dread Mob. I uh, really fall into this category, arguably Green Tide too. The reason for this is because, like, this has happened in previous editions, too, where, like, I think it's something that people aren't really aware of, too, where we're like, oh, boy, Dread Mob is finally now a thing for the first time. Like, it has been previously, but it tends to, like, cycle out of the game for a long time, like, four to five years sometimes. For example, in 5th edition, I think 5th and 6th, there was, like, a formation you could take for Dread Mob that was, like, pretty playable and really fun. And then that, like, went away completely for the game for a long time. For a very long time, I would argue that, like, Kill Cans and Death Treads were, like, barely playable. They just kind of had shit rules and nothing in the game supported them. And then at the end of 9th, Kill Cans started becoming pretty good. I think Death Dreads and Death Goals were like playable in early knife too. Uh, and like various points in eighth as well. You could have like a couple of those units in your army if you wanted to, but you wouldn't do like a full Dread Mob. A few other instances where like you were incentivized to take an army of mostly Death Dreads and Walkers and stuff, but they've all gone away at some point. There was a detachment, I think, in the Psychic Awakening book too. It just because like of how their designers work and the structure of GW for whatever reason they'll establish these uh very niche super cool and exciting sub factions but then they tend to get rid of them kind of on a whim randomly between editions i i bet whenever the next time orcs have like a new codex or index like i don't know if these will stick around if you're getting into orcs now and are very excited i think you should play like dread or whatever you think is sickest but just know that there will probably come a day where you'll have to get a thousand points of other stuff take a thousand points of your like let's say dread mob um and then combine it 
together and that's your new army because like playing all dread mob stuff like might not even be legal a eh? because they change like the unit sizes a lot someday kill cans might be three max per unit because they're trying to make one box one unit and it seems like they're moving away from like combining two boxes to be a bigger unit a lot of the time uh we've seen this with like ludas went from three boxes down to two you can only run a max of 10 ludas in the squad now uh boys used to be 30 in a unit now it's a maximum of 20 often a, a two box cap but uh, there's been some units that have gone down to just one box for a unit like custodian is there an example of this where even this edition you could take 10 custodian guard in a unit early on and then now you no longer can like one box one unit five dudes always so i wouldn't be that surprised if it happened to like kill cans at some point yeah i i just like don't want people to feel like burned down the line if they're like investing a lot of an army now uh you'll get a long time out of this like we're pretty early in the edition still um so if you build up a dread mob or cult of speed army now you'll get at least like i would say like two and a half years if not like three and a half years out of playing it which is like a significant amount of time to play and like especially if you're like building army now and you're going to be like able to play with it in like a few weeks then like yeah that's totally fine i think you'll get a lot of value and fun out of cult of speed or dread mob but I, I just don't see that many people talking about this and everyone's just like buzzing with excitement over like how cool of a new thing is. And if you're buying in, just be aware that uh, the hype train is sometimes a double-edged sword. Slowly amass an army that you are planning to use a lot, a lot, a lot, but over like years, this is like what I'm talking about, contrary to Cult of Speed and Dread Mob. If you build like a, a round, rounded amount of stuff, I think this goes well with uh, bullet point number two, play one game every six months in friend's garage. That's often the same type of player. Let's say that you're just like a hobbyist who's like, a little slow but loves painting and still like wants to play i think there's some units for you in here that are like pretty safe to bet on will be like usable in some capacity for a long time i think a really important thing is having a diverse amount of units like going into 18 kilo cans again like might be bad someday that might not work out for you if they either make them like so bad it's not fun to play with them or just the physical amount you can like legally field changes if you're someone who's playing like apocalypse games or friends who are like flexible you can just make up whatever rules you want right doesn't really matter i encourage people if you're just playing a friend to like make up your own rules and change whatever because like you know like fuck gw at the end of the day like it doesn't really matter <laughs> yeah just do whatever makes the game fun for you but i also understand those some people like sometimes want to not break the rules because that can feel weird as warhammer moves closer to being like magic and less like DD. &D. there's like uh, a respect for how the rules are written that people don't want to change and that's like understandable too I'll, I'll go over like those units more in detail but like that's that kind of person or yeah just buy some fellas hang with them show them a good time this is the easiest one like just buy whatever you think is coolest and then play games with that or just look at them i think uh it feels bad when you find out your favorite thing is bad according to people online but to you when you're friend group in the games you play it might be like insane because like the things in warhammer are only as good as what like else is around them if everyone was taking anti katan tech in every list then like necrons would not be great necrons are a very good army right now but people aren't doing that because a, a lot of armies don't have access to tools to deal with them or if they do like tech fully into that they might not have tools to deal with like other things which are also popular in tournaments um yeah for, for you just buy whatever you think is cool and then like try and self-balance of friends is something that you think is okay if you have a collection large enough to do so otherwise yeah you can even homebrew rules if you want no one's stopping you grinder's paradise okay this is the first type of player if you want to just like play competitively right now the mega knobs are hot i would highly recommend this more or less for you to pick up if this is you then you probably know this by now but like just look for big use deals frontline gaming store is good stuff warp fire minis i think has secondhand models too uh, there's a lot of stores out there obviously like facebook marketplace and ebay are good places to look too yeah just try and get these i think 15 to 18 mega knobs is great uh it doesn't matter if they're wizzy wig too much if you're new to orcs no one gives a fuck what your weapons are i think it's pretty rare for people to like actually care that your mega knobs have like claws or saws as long as you tell them what the profile is and it's like clear where it gets bad or confusing if you have like mixed weapon options like if you have all claw or all saw like no one's probably gonna care if you mix units it's you're probably gonna have to model them appropriately because otherwise it's hard to keep track of like who's diet or whatever but yeah don't don't worry about WYSIWYG too much as much as you would have like space marines or something gasgill's sick i think he's good in most oracleists i think he's good in green tide he's good if like we eventually pivot too bad away from bully boys and uh yeah he's obviously great in bully boys too he's super beneficial from double log makari's banner is really good in double log five to 15 knobs yeah i i like two squads of five personally and trucks 
But uh, I know some people were even taking like 20 or 30, which I think is like excessive. Uh, I, I think like two by five knob units, each of a war boss is good. Triple war boss, I would give, uh, yeah, one war boss to each of your two knob units and then one for 20 boys, which I recommend. But if you don't want to paint 20 boys, like understandable, but it's like still kind of a lot of models for some people. Two units of Grotz, you have to 20 Gretchen and two Run Hunters, they're 11 models each. That's just how you have to take them. A battle wagon with all the fixings, like just glue everything that comes in that box box to the kit three trucks and five to ten storm boys these are good for scoring i think like if you're trying to play orcs while they're hot and you're like a tournament player who's like i've always liked orcs like now seems like a good time it is and uh you will probably have a great time with this it's just like world leaders uh with a four up field no pain basically you're a little bit slower but not by much you're gonna have a great turn two and three turn one is your setup turn just move the trucks like i've i, I covered a bully boy game in a recent video if, if you want to look for that the most recently uploaded video currently the one right before this and uh, i'm gonna do some more like battle reports in the future too they're normally i plan on taking to a lot of tournaments soon yeah that's the grinder's paradise God bless the casuals, most people. Literally just buy the sickest unit and use whatever rules you want. You can play this game however you want, but playing with things you think are cool is best. Of looking for a more solid foundation than that, avoid big point sinks. Sorry, Stompa. Tend to lead to more imbalanced games. Buy a variety of different smaller units. Give them each a character. Okay, so what does this mean? The Stomp is great. It's surprising to me that they're selling him in the big boy box because I feel like Stomp is always lead to like skewed games one way or another. It's a problem that like big units in 40k almost always have. Either your opponent has tools to deal with a Stompa, in which case typically they go away right away, or they don't, in which case he just like lives the whole game as an absolute menace. People like to imagine that you like slowly chip away at a Stompa and then like eventually he dies, which like like sure that sometimes happens but from my experience games of like big things tend to go like very much one way or another kind of fast i think it can be unfortunately like not as interesting as like just a lot of small stuff if you love stompas get one and you'll have a good time just because he's like so sick like probably won't matter to you i want to say that just because i feel like i don't hear that many other people talk about it where like yeah big models lead to skewed games um, either in your favor or in your opponent's favor. They're a nightmare and they can't deal with them or they can. So if you, if you play like Warhammer once with a Stompa that dies turn one, you're like, this game sucks. Like maybe the Stompa dying turn one is the big reason for that. So having a variety of units is a good way to solve this. If Mega Knobs get nerfed tomorrow and you have a million of them, then... That sucks. If you have a Mega Knob unit, a Knob unit, a Boy unit, a Squig Hog unit, a Beast Mega Boy unit, then you have a variety of stuff where like most of your games will probably be okay because you're not like specking too hard into one thing. I understand this can be hard for new players if like you don't want to have to keep track of that many data sheets, in which case just choose one that you like a lot and buy that, just buy whatever you think is cool and that'll probably be okay too. Or if you like start small, which I recommend like 500 point games, 1000 point games, and you're like, I like this, more of this, then just buy some stuff, play with it, see if you like it or not, then buy more. I think buying a 2000 point army right off the bat is a mistake because you might realize you don't like the play style and that doesn't feel great. If you're trying to figure out like what within orcs you like, start with a variety and see what feels best like squig hogs might be your favorite thing and then you realize you just want to do beast nega detachment and run the max amount of them which i think is going to be 24 you might love boys and treks right and then you just want to do six units of boys and six treks buy yourself a little treat paint it up and then move on to the next one i think all the starter boxes are a really good deal like any battle force that you can get for retail is great the old christmas boxes if you can find them for retail value are very good too and all the start collecting boxes are good too the old one with the death and the boys that's just being phased out now for the beast naga one is pretty common to find i'd be surprised that people are really like upcharging for that box and all of those boxes tend to just give you a couple of each unit instead of giving you many of the same thing which is good because then you can just buy like one of each of them and you'll have a fun variety of units at the end that's great to play games with into other people with similar collections like if you come from magic i think like a good comparison for i think start collecting box fight each other is probably commander magic it puts a lot more thought into their boxes and how balanced they are against each other but there's like some semblance of that kind of in warhammer too with the combat patrol boxes they try it harder if you're just playing combat patrol it's a pretty good time eventually you might decide that you want more because uh, there's like a finite amount of units in there so there's like limited room for interaction and games tend to be like very swingy too yeah uh so if you're down to just uh yolo into something regardless of like it's shelf life being potentially like three years or so and then you have to include more in it or switch to a different faction or you're just like looking to collect like every orc thing 
Actually, this case doesn't have that much in it right now, but I, I think I have like almost max of every unit. And uh, you'll do that if you just like obsess over them for two decades or so. It just happens eventually. If that's you or you want that to be you, I'm sorry. Uh, we have the same brain rat neuroses and I hope it works out for you. For Dread Mob, I think 18 kill cans is the best way to play them right now. Kill cans are the unit that's like perfect in terms of like stratagems that synergize with their rockets. I wouldn't run any guns but rockets either on them. For the same reason, and Grot tanks are very, very good. Rockets are great spammed on big units. There's uh, many stratagems you can stack together in order to make them super effective. Like the plus one damage, plus one to wound against monsters and vehicles one is really good. Lutas feel like a trap to me. I don't like Lutas. They're cool models, so I'll like try playing with them. But if you're trying to like have quasi-competitive games, I wouldn't necessarily run them. Gorkonauts and Death Dread, sort of similar. The Gorkonauts, like such a cool model, and I think he's like okay, which makes me want to run them because I feel like you'll still be able to play games where you didn't feel that bad to have along and it's just such an awesome model uh if he's even like uh more playable than he was previously which he is i think it's worth taking for me personally just because i like seeing gorkonauts on the table death dreads right now feel too expensive point wise but i can see them going down in the future and even right now their current price of 135 is not so bad and mech guns with a shock attack gun for rolling ones to hit is also decent bubble chuckers are fun smasher guns are probably the best one custom mega cannons are currently ap1 which hurts them a lot probably skip those and with most orc stuff don't worry too much about being WYSIWYG I don't think your opponent's going to freak out if your mech guns aren't modeled to have the correct gun profile most people don't know what they look like even in tournaments like I use the wrong ones and no one ever cares just make sure they know what they do because that's what's important tell them clearly like what this gun is and what rules it has regardless of what it looks like that's what people actually get upset about with WYSIWYG people get upset with WYSIWYG if like things are confusing or don't match the expectations they thought they were going to do most people don't know what the orc guns look like for mech guns and if you're just like here's my mech gun this is what it does they're gonna be like okay cool and then probably not care as long as it is like a mech gun cult of speed 18 bikes feels like the core to me two to three death go war trikes are really good i think you want each bike squad to probably have a leader unless you run out of points shock jump drabsters are probably the best buggy i like them a lot for scoring and it's fun to like snipe characters with them too like their gun is uh pretty wild as far as other buggies scrap jets are okay i'm not sold on them yet but they seem like not so bad. One thing I forgot to write down here is the enhancement that lets a unit have assault ramp basically where a transport can move, then they can disembark and then still charge is super, super good. So I would either get 20 boys, 10 knobs or five mega knobs in a truck with a war boss and mega armor. 20 boys would go inside a battle wagon um, I think they're my favorite because Cult of Speed wants to play like a very objective centric game. One of the strongest sub factions of work at scoring secondaries, if not just like in the game at scoring secondaries in general, you can do tactical well, you can do cleanse and teleport homer very well too. You can get to your opponent's deployment zone so fast, you can probably deploy one there every turn in your opponent's backfields. You can max that. If not, you can probably do one or two in the center and then every other turn in your opponent's backfield, which is still a lot of points. Engage is not a bad secondary, but I think I like cleanse more. That stuff kind of comes down to like mission and matchup. So it's hard to make like a broad statement, but yeah, you're great at scoring secondaries and shock jump boxes are a big reason why. And I think all of their shooting strategies, uh, stratagems like synergize well off the def coptas and rockets. So a couple of big units of def coptas, and that's what you put your shooting stratagems on. Seems like the best player to me. I think like bikes are not great at shooting and then using the stratagems to make bikes better at shooting, like doesn't do that much. They're still just like strength five, AP zero going to one within half range guns at the end of the day, which isn't that impressive. I think that's their profile. I don't remember now, but it's like, yeah, whatever it is, it's not great. But it's good for occasionally clearing like certain screens and not much else. But yeah, you're fast, you're mobile, and you'll have a good time like zipping around the board. Safe bets. If you're just looking to buy stuff that feels like it'll be around and playable for a long time, you'll enjoy playing with. All the beast naga stuff, none of it's ever bad in basically any detachment. Like it's certainly better in some than others, but yeah, I, I really think beast naga's stuff is like well-rounded like squig hogs taking a couple units of four four being the three squig hogs and a knob and smash a squig seems great and war horde it's obviously good in the the beast nugget attachment if you throw a squigasaur in there for like eight and a squigasaur it's that you can play them in bully boys too and still do like probably pretty okay especially in like casual games probably okay is like me imagining like a, a, a tournament scenario playing with your friends or like a like a more like casual competitive tournament i think eight squig hogs and the Squigasaur is really strong. Yeah, like Beast Naga Boys and trucks, kill rigs, all that stuff is going to be, I think, like, okay at worst. 
and very good at best. They seem to be like, Beast Nagas have an archetype to them that feels like they've nailed and probably won't change that much over time. The buggies felt like they just made a bunch of cool models and didn't know what to do with them rules wise, but Beast Nagas feel like they have very clear rules that are like usually effective. And I'd be surprised if in three or four years, all the Beast Nagas stuff is bad. I bet it'll always be like at least pretty decent. Knobs of Mega Knobs is, are great right now. Uh, knobs, you always wanna have a war boss. Mega Knobs, you often want a war boss and mega armor too i think the kff guy is okay and i also like them on their own as just like six mega knobs in a truck the only reason i'm like not less confident is because of bully boys i can see a world in which bully boys is eventually nerfed and they take a hit as a result which makes bully boys like okay and probably brings them down to maybe where they should be if they end up being really oppressive but that hurts them in other detachments right because like there's not different points for units in different detachments, unfortunately. So if something gets nerfed, it just affects everything. And then it, it kind of forces you to play bully boys with them, probably. Yeah, but but for now, and probably for a while, knobs and mega knobs are going to be pretty good. Diverse melee. So just like any combat thing in the codex is going to remain strong for longer than the shooting stuff is. Like flash kits are a good example. They were very, very good for most of time. Now that Badrick's gone, I think they're bad again. And that's sad. And I think like they often don't know what to do with work shooting this edition at least like docage not great loot is not great i think most orc shooting is very like eating like loot is in uh eighth edition though were incredibly strong 15 was uh very common in basically any competitive orc list same with shock attack guns you had three and most lists my list definitely had three so like shooting units and orcs i feel like tend to like accidentally be good for whatever reason and then they like make them bad again and it tends to fluctuate a lot versus like boys are typically not that bad ever um, knobs have been good for uh, an, an edition and a half or close to two editions now. Gazgol is good. I would say he's been good for two editions as well. It seems like they make an effort to make centerpiece characters often good. Some that don't succeed in that, like Vashtor, unfortunately, uh, for Chaos Space Marines. The Lion is like not great right now either, but I think most centerpiece characters are often pretty decent and playable. It feels like Gaz will be for a long time too. So yeah, if you're unsure of what to buy, if it looks like it's good in combat, it's probably safer bet with something that has a lot of guns unfortunately as much as like docker jets and all that it just feels like they don't know what to do with them from a balance perspective grots are a really good staple um they have been good for almost every edition of warhammer i've ever played the number you want to take varies a lot I think 20 to 30 feels safe for a long time and has been safe for a long time. In 8th edition, like 90 plus was pretty common. Can get crazy. I think in Dreadmob, you might see 90 plus again. Like lots of Grot seems good in that detachment. For reasons I'll go over in a future video if people want. Um, but yeah, they're, they're like good screens. They're super, super cheap. And all your transports are good. It's another thing that's been good for a few editions and seems like they'll continue to. Uh, I like trucks. Dedicated transports are just very good in 40k right now in general. Because they're a unit that can do an action that's usually not up to that much else and also fulfills the role of obviously transporting your guys. But after that, if you're just like a cheap thing that moves fast, that uh, has a lot of utility in the game. If you're a new player, don't think of your trucks as just like once they drop off their guys, they like sit there and do nothing. Like make them charge enemy units to keep them trapped in combat, move block with them, make them do secondary missions around the board. Transports are very good. And then the battle wagon is like good in combat. It's a good, it's a decent shooting platform and it can also do anything a truck can. Painting. Uh, try to stick to a uniform color scheme, but as long as your bases are consistent, lots of things look fine with orcs. Painting like uh, a different clan for each unit is fun. I tend to get bored of painting the same thing a lot. I'm sure a lot of other people do too. Unlike Marines, where you generally want your whole army to like be the same chapter and look pretty uniform, our orcs are like a ragtag kind of scrappy bunch. I think as long as your bases look the same, your orcs can look like pretty different. If you start painting like purple pants and everyone, and after like 40 models, you're like, I hate purple pants. This was a mistake. Don't feel like you have to give up or repaint all your purple pants just like start painting brown pants or whatever color that you want and then paste them like base them the same and if they're like skin is painted the similar way too they'll look good together i think it's kind of like demons but in some ways more extreme because like uh orcs have a similar de design language in their models versus demons are like very non-uniform in their design language so sometimes you have to try harder to like make them feel cohesive otherwise it just feels like visually kind of a mess of an army versus orcs like if you switch up your colors a lot like orcs Orcs all have the same kind of like bulky shapes, which uh, leads to silhouettes that like look good together. As long as their bases are the same, they'll feel like uh, cohesive in a way that I think is easier to do than certain other factions. It also matches their lore. Orcs probably wouldn't have uniforms with the exception of like blood axes, right? Having like a horde of slightly differently painted models 
will look better than a lot of other things. And I think like because the army is so hard to paint, because typically you have just a ton of stuff in it, whatever helps you stay motivated to paint them is uh, going to be worth it. And if it's like changing your color scheme halfway through, I think that's okay. Alternate what kind of unit you're painting, paint stuff in batches, five to 10 miles a time usually works pretty good for me. If you finished a bunch of boys, like move on to a vehicle next. Again, your army has like a lot of different stuff in it. Tackling one type of thing and moving on to another can be really useful. Give yourself a character every once in a while as a treat. Yeah, batch painting, typically I'll start off with 10 guys, get them all like base coated into like uh, a battle ready standard, maybe not even like a little below that. Base coated and then maybe like a single wash and then I'll go and do ver details. So like I'll do the teeth and nails on like five boys, then move on and do the other ones after that. And then I get the very end for like eyes and stuff. I'll just like pick up an individual model, paint it to completion and then move on to the next one. Like starting in big batch and like as big batch becomes less efficient or feels boring, then move on to painting them like individually, which is asymmetrical batch painting. I guess I just explained what that is. Any painting is good painting. It's fine to leave models unfinished or base code and then come back to them later if it helps you stay motivated for a lot of units like especially if it's something i'm not planning on playing with really but it's like convenient to batch paint them like say like i only want to run five storm boys but i own 15 i'm also painting like 20 boys which i want to play with i'll like probably paint all of those like all 15 storm boys and the 20 boys to like a basic ish level and then leave the storm boys i don't need for later come back to them someday and then just like focus on finishing the boys and storm boys and then when you're ready to paint later you've at least like got like a 50% or more head start especially if you're like airbrushing a lot or dry brushing doing things in batches is often very efficient you can just like paint on the brush blah 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 fill in colors your wet palette sells the paint on it and then you move on to the next one it can help me at least like stay motivated to finish painting so yeah don't feel like you have to go from zero to a hundred for every unit and then like only then can you can move on to the next one as long as you're painting because this army is like not a particularly easy one to paint i would say due to like sheer volume of models it's okay Okay to hop around and whatever uh, helps you get any amount of paint on them at all is like good and the most important thing is just like to keep the paint flowing and don't like get overwhelmed or anxious and like take a break for a long time uh unless like if you want to do that for like life reasons or whatever that's fine but i think uh that's what tends to lead to like the death of like army projects for me yeah just do whatever makes it fun in the moment for you so here's an example of mixing it up. Most of my orcs are like a sort of normal green color. I also have a whole army of um, like Cult of Speed that's like 3,000 points and they all have like white skin and like corpse paint. And uh, I was like kind of tired of both of those. So like my Beast Naga boys, a bunch of them are just like red randomly. They look like Urukai. And because their bases match the other ones, I think they look like pretty good together. Uh, it would have been cool to include a whole army shot in here. I guess that would have been a good thing to think of. Maybe I can find that now, actually. Hold up. Uh, so here's some photos of the army I took to LVO this year. I have many more orcs than this, and they all are painted in kind of a similar way. Green skin here. Uh, white up here and then right here, but because all their bases are similar, I feel like it makes them semi-cohesive in my opinion, and it was a lot more fun to do than just painting them in the same way. Um, I think what's important to me is that every unit feels uniform. Like these guys were painted around the same time, uh, and I tried to make them look like they all belong together, right? But like these squig hogs are much different, and they all belong together, and because their bases are both like deserty, they look okay together as like an army too. Same with these dudes here, like similar bases, right? But they have the red urukai skin and they also all have like a similar kind of like rusty grunge texture on the metals it's like another thing that's cohesive that helps make the whole army like uniform as a whole but more interesting to for me to paint doing things a bit differently each time this banner was fun to do too i wanted this battle wagon slash truck to stand out and be like a cool centerpiece so this is like a freehand thing this is obviously pretty extreme don't feel like you have to freehand a banner but i enjoyed doing it and that's what made painting this vehicle fun for me so that's what i did whatever that is for you on your tanks do that Kit bashing is also great. I think like it's really cool to see a unique orc army, easy army to kit bash too. Even with like the new modern pose kits, there's like a lot of things that you can do. This truck is like pretty similar to the original one. I just have like barbed wire here and it made these flags to put on it. So like kit bashing can be as extreme or uh, simple as you like versus like this guy's a pretty extreme kit bash. Uh, there's like barely any orc parts on him. It's mostly like Warhammer fantasy Rhinox stuff. And there's like a Chaos Knight's head down here. Oh, these grots are purple just because I wanted them to be different color so i can tell them apart that's another thing of like painting your units differently from each other also helps in orcs when you have tons and tons of units it can be kind of confusing who belongs to what it's so like these grots are color coded so they can stand out from the other grots and it's also fun to paint purple for a little bit yeah same with these knobs back here these are like the goth knobs that have like red shoulder pads 
then these are like the bad moons knobs. I can tell that they're in different units because these have like the yellow and the red instead of the black and the red. This war boss goes with them. These are the yellow grots. They're painted pretty similarly to the purple ones, but yeah, they just have like yellow where the purple is. These squig hogs are like my blood axe squig hogs. Like he's got the little like storm boy hat. So he feels more like a blood axe. There's a blood axe truck back there too. It's uh, built off of a uh, chimera chassis. And they just added like a claw and some stuff. That rhino is also pretty kit bash. So I don't know if there's more pictures of it later yeah here's my death kill war trike he's got the pale skin to match these guys and uh they're they were like all painted around the same time when i was like doing a lot of uh like pale works with uh, like black metal corpse paint which is uh, still maybe my favorite works that i've done yeah those are some examples of uh like how orcs can look pretty ragtag but still like try and feel kind of coherent together Here's a picture of a recent mega battle. Um, there's like these red orcs that have kind of similar bases to mine, which belong to somebody else. And then between my orcs having similar color bases, they look like really coherent together. I was surprised at like how much they felt like they were part of the same army, which I feel like goes to reinforce that principle even more where it's like, yeah, as long as your bases are coherent, like you're good. You guys can be like crazy different looking from each other. And uh, there'll still be probably something that makes them feel like they belong in the same army together. Airbrushing is a great way to save time. Um, I airbrush basically all my models now, but I didn't use to when I first started playing and uh, it's definitely possible to paint a whole army without it, but it, yeah, it saves me quite a bit of time and I definitely recommend it if you're trying to get a bunch of models of any faction done fast. And yeah, if you don't have an airbrush, I think you can get a lot done with rattle cans too. Of either like base coating all your models, like one color, like green or red or something, uh, and then like painting on top and then like, yeah, just like dry brushing uh, goes a really, really long way too. I'm down to do a video on painting without an airbrush in the future. I know it's something people ask for a lot, but I feel like there's a lot of like coverage of that out there from other people. What if anyone wants to see from me specifically, like, yeah, let me know in the comments. I'd be, I'd be up for that. And, uh, it's airbrushing is like frustrating in the beginning, but it gets better. It took me a long time. I think the main things are just like trying to figure out why it clogs, like how to stop that. Miniac is a really good video from a few years ago where he goes over airbrush basics. Uh, it's, I think he's definitely a lot more knowledgeable and than me. Uh, I recommend that video if you're trying to learn airbrush stuff. And yeah, like I said earlier, like just trying to make painting fun because it's a huge amount of time. No matter how, even if you like like speed paint them, it's still going to be like fundamentally a, a pretty decent amount of time. So whatever helps motivate you to get them actually done is um, going to be worth it. For for beginners, if you're looking for like a safe orc list that you can play with for a long time, here's one that I would recommend. All right, we've got two war bosses of power claws, a war boss and mega armor, ten beast knight. Mega boys, 10 boys, two trucks, a battle wagon, um, 11 grods, three mega knobs, five knobs, and five storm boys. This adds up to 995 points currently. This will probably change at some point in the near future uh, when codex points come out, but I don't expect codex points to change that much. It might not change at all for these units. And I chose these because they feel like units that are like good now will be like fun to play with now and will probably be good and fun to play with in the future too. As opposed to things that feel like spicy things in this moment that'll like fade out. This list has a lot of different things in it, which is good because like say Maganobs get really bad all of a sudden and you don't want to play with them anymore. Like you only have three of them, so it's not a big deal. You can either just like keep them in your list and accept if they got a little worse for whatever reason or you're just swapping on three mega knobs that's not that big of a deal there's a lot of other units you could put in here i think like if you wanted to drop the mega knobs and knobs you could fill it with beast mega stuff i don't have any like swig hog boys or any of that in here because i don't know the points for those yet for like rumored at 150 for four but i, I have a feeling but it'll probably change same with uh like the beast boss on squigasaur i have a feeling his points might change too and yeah, this this feels like a fun, safe 1K list for me. I think you could probably make a better like 1K tournament list if if you're someone who has access to 1K tournaments. I feel like it's kind of a hard format to find. But yeah, it's it's like not a bad 1K list. And it's this is like a list for like having a good balanced time uh, against another good balanced army. And I would be surprised if like all these units are unplayable in like five years, unless the faction is just like in a terrible spot which happens sometimes, you know, RIP Admech. I think just like looking at the models that are like most often sold in bundles is a, is a really good way to guess like whatever the middle of the run or potentially like best, but often like middle of the run units are like these all feel like pretty solidly 
uh, going to be middle of the pack or better for the rest of this codex and probably whatever comes after that too. I would run this in the new Warhorde detachment, which is very similar to the old Log Tribe. It's almost exactly the same. They just did some like small updates to it. And I think if you're trying to build lists in general that you want to last a long time, uh, Warhorde is where you want to look because those rules feel whatever like default orc is to Games Workshop or the current design studio at the moment. Yeah, I hope this helps though. Uh, it was a, a lot of information. If you have more questions, uh, I, I try and respond to the most comments. So yeah, leave it and uh, I'll, I'll try to answer them. Uh, if there's anything you want to see in future videos about orcs too, like let me know that. It's fun seeing like what people actually care about. I feel like I'm so like in the weeds sometimes. It's like hard for me to tell like what do people want. Uh, yeah, if you like this video, you know, you can like and subscribe and stuff or leave a comment. Uh, I also have a Patreon where I'm going to be doing some uh, giveaways soon and we're raffles of painted models that I have. Maybe some unpainted stuff too, but probably mostly painted models that I paint in videos. And I'm also gonna be posting like STLs for different orc models. So, or uh, sorry, oh, total for C for legal reasons, total for C and not for use in Warhammer. ORC models for other miniature war games. Yeah, and those will be STLs on my Patreon. Yeah, thanks, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching this and uh, we'll have more orc stuff soon. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>